Most of us have at one time or another run out of fuel while on the road. Just recently, motorists in and around Nairobi were left high and dry when the country experienced a fuel shortage that caused traffic havoc for four days. Karuaro was one such frustrated driver. That was until he discovered a way to make social media work for him. Well, I, I came across it on Twitter. Um, it had been linked by someone I follow called Murigi, who had put a hashtag on there, which fed to a site which they had created, which mapped out um, where there was fuel and where there wasn't and where there were shortages. Because I had many people calling me, texting me, where's fuel? So I was just checking on the site, advising people where to go. Um, and also just to visualize what was happening, because we were getting conflicting messages. Mm -hmm. There's fuel, there's no fuel, so it was very useful in that sense, because I knew this, this, the people who were posting were um, credible. Those are sort of credible sources. With the quick thinking and smart skills of Nairobi's techpreneurs, a quick solution to finding stations with available fuel was quickly found. This, together with the help of the social media community through Twitter, led to the creation of the Find Fuel Crowd Map site. The ecosystem of Twitter in Kenya, unlike uh, Facebook, uh, there are probably about 100 to 200,000 users on, on Twitter. Facebook has over a million. So the trust levels on Twitter, because the crowd one is very small and people, most of the people t t uh, tend to know each other because there are a lot of uh, tweet ups and they end up meeting up, you know, uh, every other day or weekend or they're introduced and referred to other people. So the trust level on Twitter, there are a couple of individuals who are known and have very high trust levels. And once that information gets aggregated and you filter out the noise and whatnot, uh, Ushahidi is very good. Uh, uh, filtering, uh, filtering uh, algorithms. So the trust levels are pretty, pretty high, because uh, what happens is you take reports not based on one individual, but based on two, three, or four, five indi individuals. So the more it actually the more the merrier. Ushid is a tool for crowdsourcing information, basically creating simple ways that ordinary people can send information in to uh, you know to a website where we map it. So you can use an SMS message, you can use email, you can use the web itself. You can use Twitter or Facebook. You can use any of these tools and submit information in. And then that information is then uh, put on a map and you can see what's going on in real time. This mapping technology can easily be adapted and customized to specific user needs. The Proudly Kenyan product was, for instance, used in 2008 for the first time to show incidences of violence during Kenya's post-election turmoil in which more than 1,000 people died. Well, there's been over 12,000 deployments of Ushahidi globally. So we're talking all over the world. Uh, the biggest deployments have been uh, most recently in Japan with the, with the tsunami and the, and the earthquake. Also in, in New Zealand for the same reason. Uh, but Haiti last year, Haiti was a big, was a big deployment. Uh, and we've also seen it for election monitoring in, in um, Uganda, Tanzania, and Kenya, just in East Africa. Uh, for, for the referendum last year here in Kenya, we, we ran Uchuguzi, which, is a, which was the Ushahidi platform used to do election monitoring. You know, so it's, it's used for things like election monitoring, for crisis and disaster response, but also for mundane things like uh, finding fuel. Going forward, such innovations hope to provide tangible solutions to users like Aroro and is literally taking ICT to the streets. Well, you know, it's been amazing growth. I can't tell you how uh, surprised we were even to see, you know, where we came from three years ago with the post-election violence in Kenya to now with 12,000 deployments globally and just a massive influx of users. Um, you know, the, there's, there's increasing technology uh, work being done by us where we continue to make disruptive technology that's really making impact around the world. But at the same time, making sure that we keep our platform open enough so that anybody, ordinary people can use it. And, uh, and that's what we're seeing. I mean, we're, we're having success in that and it's really exciting to see.